performance test and centrifugal pump. Pump means a hydraulic machine which convert the mechanical energy into pressure energy. At the same time, a turbine which convert the pressure energy into mechanical energy. A pump which pump is used to increase the pressure energy of the fluid. It is used to convey fluid from one place to another or one height to another height. Pumps are classified into two categories. One is the rotodynamic pump and other one is the positive displacement pump. This is the centrifugal pump which is an example of rotodynamic pump in which uh, there are is called impeller. This is the impeller. This is a cut section. This is the impeller. This impeller is enclosed in an volute casing which is an area increasing casing. Here area is less. Here the area is more. Fluid first enters the middle portion of the Imbilla that is called I of the Imbilla. Water from the Samba enters the I of the Imbilla. Here, when the Imbilla is rotating, that rotating power is the mechanical power. But it cannot rotate manually at a high speed continuously. So, we need a prime mover. That prime mover is coupled with the pump shaft pump and this is the motor. These two are coupled here. When electrical power is supplied, this motor rotates and that the motor turns the impeller, impeller shaft or pump shaft. Then in the case of centrifugal pump or rotodynamic pump, the head developing is directly proportional to density of the fluid to be pumped. Here the fluid is water. It's a density we know that is 1000 kg per meter cube. At the same time, suppose if there is any air entrapped in this casing, then it will not produce the required head because the density of air is very less compared to water. The density of air we can find out using the characteristic equation P V equal to M R T from which P equal to M by V into R T that is P equal to rho R T from which rho density of air we can find out. If we consider the temperature of the air is 30 degrees Celsius rho equal to P by R T P is the atmospheric pressure that is 1.01325 into 10 raised to 5 Newton per meter square. R is the characteristic gas constant. That is the universal gas constant divided by molecular mass. And T is the temperature. If we substitute that values, then we will get air density 1.16. Normally, we are considering in the random the air density 1.2. That is, in the place of 1000 kg water density, some air of 1.2 is entrapped there. It will not produce the required head. The impeller is rotating ideally without sucking any fluid. So, we have to first remove the air entrapped in the suction pipe casing or a portion of the delivery. For that, we have to pour the fluid to be pumped. If water is pumping, then we have to pour water. That process is called the priming. For that, here is an vent, air vent. So first to open this one and open the valve, delivery valve. And here is an elbow. Place that elbow here and then pour water. Then the, when the water is filling the suction pipe, casing and a portion of delivery that is what a first air comes out and then the water will come continuously then after releasing all the air then we can close this one and this delivery valve 
and then remove the elbow. At the time of starting, this delivery valve should be completely closed to reduce the starting torque. And after closing that one, then we have to switch on this green button. Then the motor rotate and then it turns the engine. And when the head is developing, then we have to open this valve so that the water that is discharging through this delivery. Here, in the suction pipe, a gauge is provided. That gauge, a vacuum gauge, because fluid is always flows from high pressure to low pressure. Water is taken from the sump, there the pressure is atmospheric. So, in order to suck the fluid here, the pressure should be less than atmospheric. So, a gauge placed here, a vacuum gauge. Vacuum, that is V-A-C-U-U-E-M is the vacuum. Vacuum gauge is here. In that vacuum gauge, here, one unit kg per centimeter square and other one is pound per square inch. We need in kg per centimeter square, that is, we are using the metric system. Other one is the British system. And then before taking, you have to note the readings. In between 0 and 0.1, there are three divisions. So 0 0.033, 0 0.066, 0 0.099, that is approximately 1. And from 0.1 to 0.2, there are five divisions. So 0 0.1 to 0 0.14, 0 0.16, 0 0.18 and 2 in such a way. And here in the delivery side, the pump that is used to increase pressure energy. So at the delivery, the pressure is increasing. So a gauge placed here is the pressure gauge. And here also, that is first one LB per square inch that is inside the reading, outside the reading kg per centimeter square. We need that outside the reading. And then the fluid is discharging through this. Reading. And here to measure the discharge here and over 5 meter is using here and here that flow meter in which that uh, here is a drain plug and here is an equalizer a low pressure valve and a high pressure valve here is an equalizer it is used to equalize the pressure in the low pressure side and the high pressure side Initially, then we have to open this equalizer. Before that, we have to open this knob to tap the fluid. Then only we can take readings in the flow meter. After opening the equalizer, opening means making that knob parallel to the direction of flow. Parallel to this one. And after that, open the low pressure side. Then turn the drain plug slowly. Then initially air will come out and water will come. When the continuous flow of water is through this way, then close the drain plug. After that, open the high pressure side, high pressure knob. That is making it parallel to this. And then turn this drain plug. It should be very clear. If you turn the drain plug quickly, then mercury from this portion will come out. It is very dangerous and then it may go uh, in the water. That is very harmful. So that uh, you should be very clear. And its uh, cost is also high. So after opening this high pressure side, then turn the drain plug very slowly. At that time, mercury rises through this glass tube and after that air and the water will come when the continuous flow of water is coming then close this one after doing this then we have to close the equalizer so during the experiment time equalizer close to position drain plug close to position low pressure side and the high pressure side is in open position then after that by opening this valve, we can control the discharge 
here a pump a pump that is specified with it's a specification commonly that is maximum head and discharge in this case it's a maximum discharge is 25 uh, 20, maximum discharge is 600 liters per minute and the maximum head is 25 meter then by rotating this delivery valve suppose if you are starting the experiment from maximum head maximum discharge open this valve and then mercury that is rising when it reaches this 6 here it is printed the 100 liters per liter 100 liters per minute so when it reaches 6 then after stabilizing that then you have to note vacuum gauge reading pressure gauge reading and then here is a watt meter to measure the input power here the input power watt meter into a constant value that a constant here it is 2 that is the calibration constant that 2 calibration constant 2 into watt meter reading is the input power and after noting that watt meter reading pressure gauge reading vacuum gauge reading then reduce the discharge to 500 400, 300, 200, 100 and then 0. Each time you have to note the vacuum gauge, pressure gauge and watt meter reading. After taking all the readings up, then switch off the machine and then put this knob in closed position and after that close the high pressure side and low pressure side that is the procedure then based on the values we can find out the output power output power of the pump that means how much quantity of water rising to particular level so w into h w is the weight of water and h is the height so that w weight of water is equal to specific weight into discharge that is specific weight that is rho g rho g q h is the output power so rho 1000 kg per 1000 kg per meter cube and then g 9 rho in the 81 meter per second square and then discharge if you are considering that the maximum discharge is 600 liters per minute 600 into 10 raise to minus 3 divided by 60 because it is in liters per minute but we need that is in meter cube per second and h is the head that head is here in the vacuum gauge we will get the pressure but we need a head so multiply that kg per centimeter square into 10 then it is in meters of water because it is in kg per centimeter square that is the pressure but the pressure unit in SI system is Newton per meter square so this pressure gauge value in kg per centimeter square into 9.81 into 10 raise to 4 that is the pressure then it is in Newton per meter square but we need a head h equal to p by rho g so this value in Newton per meter square divided by rho g that is this head at that time 9.81 9.81 cancelling and the thousand thousand cancelling then in the numerator only 10 so multiply this kg per centimeter square into 10 then it is in meters of water this pressure gauge reading also multiply it with 10 then it is in meters of water and then we have to measure the height difference of these two gauges from the floor level so using a meter scale you have to measure the height from floor level to center of these two gauges so suction head hs plus delivery head hd plus level difference of these two that is the total head substitute that value in h rho g that is rho g q h not h rho g rho g q h that is the output in that uh, from that uh, we can find out the efficiency efficiency is the ratio what we wanted to what we have to pay for we need output power we have to pay input power so output power by input power is the efficiency so that 
we can find out the efficiency of this one and also we have to find the specific speed also that is specific speed in the case of pump that is ns is equal to n into root q divided by h raise to 5 by 4 for that we have to find out the speed of this one for that we can use a non contact type of tachometer here a sensor is provided while holding the tachometer at a distance then it will uh, read the speed of the motor here the motor speed and the um, impeller speed almost the same so that we can couple it together based on that speed and maximum uh, yeah, head head and uh, n, ns is equal to n into root q divided by h raised to 5 by 4 that uh, h is h and discharge that are corresponding to maximum efficiency point that is after plotting the performance curve then we have to locate which is the maximum efficiency point from there you have to drop a vertical line that touches the discharge curve discharge and head that head and discharge you have to use in the formula so that we can find the specific speed also while plotting a graph we have to take an independent quantity in the abscissa here then while plotting a graph this is abscissa x-axis in which we have to take the independent quantity here the independent quantity is the discharge while controlling that one we are actually controlling the discharge so in rotodynamic pump independent quantity is the discharge and dependent quantities that is here efficiency and input power then based on that after calculating input power q into watt meter reading and output power using the formula rho g q h then efficiency output power by input power into 100 then percentage efficiency then plot the graph this is the shape of the efficiency curve and this is the input power and this is the head then after that locate the maximum efficiency point from their proper vertical here this discharge that you have to use in the formula ns is equal to n into root q divided by h raise to 5 by 4 in which this is the h this h we have to substitute in the formula and this is the q so that and u is uh, n is the speed that is we are measuring using the tachometer then we can find the specific speed also